Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Jagda Television and this is English Bulletin. With me, Yutsa Bhattrai. The top stories first. MCP leaders discuss proposals presented by party chairman. Secretariat meeting to resume today afternoon. Government reports over 1,300 new cases of coronavirus. Active cases drop to 16,000. Government urges public to avoid mass gatherings, warns of actions against violators. Iran's parliament approves a bill to stop nuclear inspections, gives a nod for uranium enrichment if they do not receive relief. And injury hit Liverpool, progress in Champions League. Porto joins Manchester City into knockout stage. And now, the news in detail. The ruling Nepal Communist Party concluded its secretariat meeting yesterday with an understanding to resume the meeting today. The meeting focuses on discussing the proposals of Chairman Duo KP Sharma Oli and Pushpa Kamal Dahal. Party spokesperson Narayan Kaji Shwesta informed that the four-hour-long meeting held yesterday separately discussed the proposals of the two chairmen. As all Secretariat members are yet to express their views, the meeting has been rescheduled for 1 p.m. today. For 1 p.m. today afternoon at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balwadar. Executive Chairman Pushpa Kamal Dahal had presented a report at the Secretariat meeting on November 13, while Prime Minister Oli had submitted his report on November 28 to counter Dahal. During yesterday's meeting, both the chairmen expressed their views, while some leaders also gave their suggestions. Spokesperson Shwesta said that the next meeting has been fixed immediately for today since the party has already called its standing committee meeting for tomorrow. Shwesta expressed his belief that the meeting will help in resolving the internal rift within the party. The National Concern and Coordination Committee of Upper House has formed a subcommittee to study the impact of coronavirus on national pride projects. A meeting of the Parliamentary Committee yesterday decided to make a field visit to the project site and study the impact. The subcommittee is expected to give necessary suggestions to the government. Chairperson of the committee, Dil Kumari Rawal Thapa, said that the committee has decided to make a field visit and to discuss the issues with concerned stakeholders. She said that the House panel will give recommendations to the government after discussing issues with all sides. The House committee has also decided to initiate discussions regarding gender violence and the role of three tiers of government as well as people's representatives. The government yesterday confirmed 1,304 new cases of coronavirus across the country. Following the latest round of tests, the total cases of coronavirus in the country has climbed to 234,756, while the number of active cases has dropped to 16,633 from the overnight tally of 17,423. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 216,533 infected persons have recovered from the disease in the country so far. The death toll from coronavirus has climbed to 1,529 across the country with the confirmation of 21 new casualties yesterday. Nepal is currently among the top 37 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. The U.S. is still the most affected country with 14.1 million cases, followed by India with 9.4 million cases. This is Janata Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. We continue with other national news. District Administration Office Kathmandu has directed everyone to refrain from organizing and being involved in mass gatherings and processions. 
DAO yesterday warned legal actions will be initiated against anyone taking part in mass gatherings and other crowd-attracting events amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Issuing a notice yesterday, DAO has warned stern actions against anyone involved in gatherings with political or other demands. The pandemic is not over yet. Attracting crowd and organizing gathering and processions can make matters worse. Therefore, such directive had to be issued, DAO has said in the notice. Recently, some groups have been actively protesting in the streets for various reasons throughout the country. In the meantime, Kathmandu Metropolis has intensified the door-to-door -door swab sample collection program for PCR test of its citizens. Kathmandu Metropolis has been collecting swab samples of people via mobile van service after daily cases of coronavirus surged in the valley. Metropolis has been collecting swab samples of individuals under contact tracing and those who cannot reach hospital on their own for PCR test. Kathmandu Metropolis has been collecting swab samples of symptomatic individuals, senior citizens and the needy in an attempt to control the spread of the disease, coordinator of Metropolis Swab Sample Program Rishi Bhushal informed. The swab samples collected by the Metropolis are being sent to National Public Health Laboratory for PCR test. According to Assistant Secretary of Kathmandu Metropolis 11, Sarvagya Raj Paudal, ward units have been compiling details of individuals under contact tracing in coordination with Public Health Department of the Metropolis. Paudal has also requested citizens to stay home unless necessary as the infection rates have been on the rise. In other news, the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery is being observed throughout the globe today. The United Nations International Day for the Abolition of Slavery is annually held on December 2nd to raise awareness of the atrocities of modern slavery since 1986. According to International Labour Organization, more than 40 million people worldwide are victims of modern slavery. Although modern slavery is not defined in law, it is used as an umbrella term covering practices such as forced labour, debt bondage, forced marriage and human trafficking. Essentially, it refers to situations of exploitation that a person cannot refuse or leave because of threats, violence, coercion, deception and or abuse of power. In addition, more than 150 million children are subjected to child labour, accounting for almost 1 in 10 children around the world. ILO has adopted a new legally binding protocol designed to strengthen global efforts to eliminate forced labour, which entered into force in November 2016. And now, the news from Economic Front. Insurance Board has issued Agricultural and Livestock Insurance Directive 2020. The new directive will replace Crops and Livestock Insurance Directive 2013. According to the Insurance Board, the new Agricultural and Insurance Directive aims to promote agricultural sector by mitigating the risk involved in agricultural sector by the means of insurance. The new directive consists of methods to tackle recent problems in the agro sector. Investment Board further added, according to the new directive, all non-life insurance companies should offer insurance to agriculture and livestock. We'll be taking a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for international and sports news. Welcome back and now the international news. Iran's parliament on Tuesday approved a bill that would suspend UN inspections of its nuclear facilities, AP reported. 
According to the news agency, the bill also requires the government to boost its uranium enrichment if European signatories to the 2015 nuclear deal do not provide relief from oil and banking sanctions. The vote to approve the bill was a show of defiance after the killing of a prominent Iranian nuclear scientist last month. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has the final say on all nuclear policies. The final vote tally wasn't immediately released. But in a vote on whether to discuss the bill earlier Tuesday, the official IRNA news agency said 251 lawmakers in the 290-seat chamber voted in favour. The bill would give European countries one month to ease sanctions on Iran's key oil and gas sector and to restore its access to the international banking system. The U.S. imposed crippling sanctions on Iran after President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew from the nuclear agreement, triggering a series of escalations between the two sides. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump yesterday filed a lawsuit in Wisconsin seeking to disqualify more than 221,000 ballots in the state's two most democratic countries. It was rather counties. According to AP, it is the long-shot attempt to overturn Joe Biden's win in a battleground state he lost by nearly 20,700 votes. Trump filed the case a day after Democratic Governor Tony Evans and the chairwoman of the Wisconsin's Election Commission certified Biden as the winner of the state's 10 electoral college votes. Trump asked the Wisconsin Supreme Court to take the case directly rather than have it start in a law court and order Evers to withdraw the certification. The Wisconsin Supreme Court gave Evans until 8.30 p.m. Tuesday to respond to the lawsuit, an unusually light deadline that speaks to how quickly the court is likely to decide the case. You are watching Jonathan Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Teenager Curtis Jones grabbed a 58-minute winner as an injury hit Liverpool qualified for the knockout stage of the Champions League with a 1-0 win over Ajax Amsterdam at Anfield on Tuesday. According to Reuters, the victory ensured a top spot in Group D for Jürgen Klopp's side with 12 points after rivals Atlanta were held to a 1-1 draw at home to mid -Eland. Ajax with seven points are a point adrift of second place, second place Atlanta and need a victory over the Italians in their final group game to reach the last 16. FC Porto joined Manchester City in advancing to the next phase of the Champions League after two played out a goalless draw in their Group C clash on Tuesday. The point combined with defeat for Olympiacos in France was enough to ensure Porto finished second while City, who had already qualified last week, are short of top place. But Pep Guardiola's team surrendered their 100% record in the group despite dominating the host as they set up a myriad of chances but proved unable to make the breakthrough. We are at the end of Chanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. NCP leaders discuss proposals presented by party chairman. Secretariat's meeting to resume today afternoon. Government to propose over 1,300 new cases of coronavirus. Active cases drop to 16,000. Government urges public to avoid mass gathering. Warns of actions against violators. Iran's parliament approves bill to stop nuclear inspections. Gives a nod for uranium enrichment if they do not receive relief. And the injury hit Liverpool progress in Champions League. Porto joins Manchester City into knockout stage. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Jonathan Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janathasamachar.com. We urge all our viewers to follow government directives of the lockdown and follow healthy hygienic practices. 
to keep safe from any infection. Keep watching Jandata Television. Namaste.